How would you you describe that style, the prayer style, let's say? I don't think that we have uh, like particular style. Of course, we have our favorite solutions. People don't know, but you are half Finnish, half Armenian, Russian-born, Serbian-based architect. Yes, that's right. <laughs> that's like <laughs> that's all four countries me. in one. What were the main challenges of forming Freya, and uh, how did it came uh, in, into your mind? The main challenge, I would say, was a fear only inside my mind that I can't solve it, that I can lose everything, that uh, I I don't know, I just can't manage it. How did you manage the, the, the mm-hmm. language barrier? Mm-hmm. The first Serbian language that I uh, learned was construction Serbian language by builders. And mm-hmm. they really taught me, like, Christina, this is uh, like utichnica. <laughs> I was like, how? Suck it. As I told you, like... I am a very emotional person and it's hard for me to hide irritation or angry or something like that. And I know that they can see it. I mean, it's obviously. Yeah. That story with the gangsters, after three hours of negotiations, I was just, it was just magic for me. When these very serious and rich people start draw, drawing like kids. Dobar dan, dobrodošli u sferu. Pre nego što najemo današnjeg gosta, želili bismo da se zahvalimo našim Patreonima koji već e, par meseci podržavaju ovaj kanal i ovaj podcast svojim mesečnim donacijama. Za sve one koji žele da postanu Patreoni, e, mogu da se e, učlane na e, naš kanal i da e, tamo imaju pristup produženim verzijama epizoda kao i da dobiju mogućnost da postave pitanje našim gostima u napred i da dobiju pristup bonus sadržaju koji mi snijemo sa našim gostima e, nevezano za naše epizode na YouTube. Ako želite postanete Patreoni, slobodno se prijavite na kanal i podržite ovaj podcast, nama to stvarno mnogo znači. Welcome to 23rd episode of Svera Podcast. Today's episode is proudly brought to you by three outstanding companies who have been at the fair front of innovation in their respective industries. We are talking about companies Graphisoft, Groe and Alumil. Each of these companies has a unique story to tell and an impressive portfolio that's worth exploring. Graphisoft, a pioneer in the world of architectural software, has been empowering architects and designers with their cutting-edge building information modeling solution, known as BMI. BIM. Their commitment to transforming the way we design and construct buildings is nothing short of remarkable. Groe, the renewed German manufacturer of premium sanitary fittings and fixtures, have been a symbol of excellence in the world of bathroom and kitchen design for decades. They bring elegance and functionality together in their products, creating beautiful spaces that truly stand the test of time. And also we would like to thank Alumil, a global leader in aluminum extraction industry, which provides innovative solutions that enhance the way of we use aluminum in construction, architecture and beyond. Their commitment to sustainability and advanced technology has made them an industry standout. And special thank to our friends from uh, Vegan Restaurant Vikasha uh, to their dedicated cat- catering uh, sphere. Uh, their top-notch catering services elevate any event or team building, and you can find their contact information in the show notes. And finally, our today's guest is Kristina Kivistoinen Katlamadzian, a Russian-Armenian Finnish architect and the chief of architects at Frey Architects in Belgrade Bay Studio. Kristina opened her studio almost two years ago after moving from Moscow, where she worked as a chief architect in numerous big projects. Freya Architects as a dynamic and skilled team of emerging professionals with expertise in conceptualizing and bringing projects to fruition. Their mission is to craft aesthetically captivating and people-centric environments. Welcome to Sphere. Christina, welcome to Sphere. Dobrodošla u Sferu. Hi, thank you. Hvala puno. Um, 
first of all, before we you know start digging in into your experience and and and, and the theme of the of this episode, like we want to congratulate you on the winning two prizes, right? Yeah. In the Zagreb right. Design Festival. Thank you. So how how was that? How was that feeling? And I mean, what do you think about like um, awards in general, like in architecture? Is it like And enough for us, like as a part of like a validation of our ideas and like what we're doing, and yeah, how do you feel about the words in in general, like especially uh, these two? Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. Um, actually, about Zagreb Design Week, I was really surprised because um, they tried to collect every kind of design from bottle design up to furniture uh, exposition uh, at one point and uh, for me it was important to see what we have here like mean Mm -hmm. here uh, on balkans and and so on and um, i was surprised because of like the range of selection and um, actually because we won the first and the second prizes Mm -hmm. it was just like wow How, how it's possible. <clears throat> Speaking about competitions in general, um, I understand that um, competitions and architectural competitions and uh, um, it's not about the smartest or uh, the most interesting project. It's about it's about if you strike the jury or not. Mm-hmm. And I just suppose that uh, in Zagreb we just did it, we stroke it, so... Yeah, the jury was on your side. Yes. <laughs> so yes. It, it, you you say it's it's a bit uh, subjective. It depends on the jury. I would say it's totally subjective. Of course, uh, when I was in uh, this the World Architecture Festival in Amsterdam in twenty uh, nineteen, I I used to work uh, for like another company, and I was there like a senior uh, architect of uh, that project that they chose. And of course, uh, like that kind of festival was more objective than locals. But in general, for me, any competition is about the jury. Yes. Yeah. And um, speaking about Freya and your your studio, um, we believe it's like really like a refreshment, you know, Mm -hmm. and um, the architecture scene in Belgrade, like specifically. Um, I mean, I would personally say it's kind of like a Scandinavian minimalism, but with a twist, with some like interesting mm-hmm. details. Um, but how would you you describe that style? I mean, um, the Freya style, let's say. Mm-hmm. And um, what is important? Um, is is it is your style like important? Does it change from project to project? And I mean, how do you perceive it? And and what is like important to you mm-hmm. in that sense? It's like my favorite question about styles because, uh, to be honest, I believe that um, styles in architecture and, and design ended somewhere um, in the 20th century. Mm-hmm. After that, we have postmodernism, post, 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 and postmodernism, and some replicas and some just copies. But of course, like an artist uh, as a person can have um, his or her own hand. Uh, so like individual hand. Um, I don't think that we have uh, like particular style, but probably we have our hand. Mm-hmm. But I even even here I can't highlight like why. Um, of course, we have our favorite solutions, uh, but in general, we try to create um, new things from project to project, not to repeat our previous experience. For me personally, it's important not to repeat because uh, you can stuck inside mm-hmm. your... Uh, Known area. Yes. And um, I believe that at that point, there is no development like for an artist. It's like that quote, like when you rest, you rust, like something like yeah, that. And gra- gradually rusting. Yeah. <laughs> like, like copper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And speaking about uh, what's important, um, I would say that like a person, a people and user of this space is important. At the end, we all do this for people, for users. Mm-hmm. So every time... Uh, <clears throat> 
where uh, we try to create special atmosphere for them according to the concept to like clients goals to the context of city of urban situation and uh, we're going to go deeper into the actual like user needs yeah. and how to like connect those all of those different factors yeah um, but, but we, we can we can uh, start with the name now of your studio uh, freya is freya. connected to 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 the goddess freya yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, um, people don't know, but you are half Finnish, half Armenian, Russian-born, uh, Serbian-based architect. Yes, that's right. <laughs> that's like <laughs> that's all four countries me. in one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, what were the main challenges of forming Freya, and uh, how did it came uh, in, into your mind? Um. Here in Serbia or in general? Like, let's say in general. In general, um, the main challenge, I would say, was a fear only inside my mind that I can't solve it, that I can lose everything, that uh, I I don't know, I just can't manage it. And that uh, I'll, um, I wouldn't have uh, any projects or clients. Mm -hmm. Like... Uh, in general, this was uh, a fear, and um, and also uh, like technically, I didn't have any partners or assistant when I started. Uh, that's why, and also I didn't have any business and management education. So you have to build something that you don't know how to build, but you have some kind of picture how it should be and this is the, that was and still is very complicated and tricky i think we uh, on our faculties we don't have that economic management um uh, subjects that much yes uh, uh, yes they they don't they don't uh, teach you at the, at the university and uh, not only like economic management it's like numbers you can learn but uh, how to be a leader how how create your team mm -hmm. how um uh, no, uh how to say how to be a good leader in your team because uh for me i have this stronger uh, um feeling that uh the team is like 50 or even 60 percent of all maybe even more yeah. practice yes mm -hmm. maybe even more and the connection between people in that team yeah, that, that's the key. Yes, actually. and you have to uh, to build it as well. The yeah. tricky part there is that you you have a vision, but you're not sure how to get to that vision, Absolutely. and then you're just um, searching in the dark, uh, let's Absolutely. say, and then you're not sure about anything. But if you have that vision in in mind, then mm -hmm. you can you can get there. I think it's it's the case for every kind of like entrepreneur entrepreneurship like uh, and entrepreneur in general like they have a vision they insist on it but they're not sure if what they're doing in mm -hmm. this moment that if it's like the, the really the, the right thing to do but you just need to like intuitively like know it you can check with some metrics always uh, to do some calculated risks but then in the end it's like always um, you need to kind of be bold in pursuing those like things all the time because you will never have like one hundred percent like security in what you're doing. Yes, of yeah. course. Is that how um, the same notion that you had like in forming Freya, especially like in another country with even more unknowns uh, and, and stuff like that? Yeah. Um, here it was completely diff uh, different. And um, completely new rules of architectural marketing, new materials, I would say, um, new, I don't know, rules of construction sites. Because my experience uh, here with builders um, for like this almost two years um, showed me that uh, I didn't know how to do it. Because in different countries, different um, culture of construction sites mm -hmm. as well. Um, so because of it, 
it was difficult uh, how to say um i had to uh i had to know it uh, as fast as i could and i was just trying to uh to meet people to read some uh things to understand to be aware what's going on here in architectural sphere and, and did, did you have the language barrier uh in that in that <laughs> sense with with those let's say builders on the construction site or with the clients here in Serbia or um, or your clients are foreigners or your clients are russians so uh, how how could you uh, how how did you manage the the, the yeah. language barrier mm-hmm. um i would say that uh with for example suppliers or producers of like uh, custom furniture and uh, uh we uh have conversation uh, conversations in english and there is no problem but with builders it was uh, interesting um the first serbian language that i uh learned was construction serbian language by builders and mm-hmm. they really taught me and it was incredible because um they were so uh, how to say uh, patient and t- um they tolerate me they taught me like Kristina this is uh, like utichnica <laughs> i was like how socket um i don't know utichnica and like and we uh, started with these builders uh, so even if i have now for example some uh, negotiations in english with the suppliers and uh, the first uh word uh, like for different zit utichnica pot as nam sta the first uh i remember in serbian i mean this architectural uh, words. words yes amazing amazing we we talked about uh, being a leader and managing a team mm-hmm. so how are you as a, like a leader in i mean what is your management style in mm-hmm. that sense do you give like Uh, a lot of freedom uh, to um, you know to the architects that you lead or um, you're maybe more micromanaging <laughs> or, and yeah what what is your kind of like management style in in, in that sense um to be honest a very very tricky and controversial question for me now <laughs> because i'm still looking for my style or for any style i don't know um Uh I would say for now um I learned that um the atmosphere and vibe of inside your office is very important. Uh because even uh when you have uh deadlines, uh stressful situations, like urgent situations, we have it like every day almost. Um if you have this vibe and if um every person in your team understand understands why it's so why we do this why we don't do this um that you can solve it you can solve this storm together and um as a leader i think that it's important to explain every time again and again and uh, you should explain it as more as they need um like um uh, <clears throat> I don't know. I'd like to uh have some example. But yeah, like it's like um you want to repeat so that it sticks. It that I'm it's not important. Yes. It, it's not um if you say it once it might be, you know, forgotten or even twice or even three times. Um but it's kind of like frustrating a bit, right? To repeat it so many times. Yep. But then it's like very necessary to have that like continuous frustrating uh, and annoying i would say <laughs> yeah. and uh um as i told you like i am very emotional person and it's hard for me to hide irritation or angry or something like that and i know that they can see it i mean it's obviously yeah but also they understand why it's mm-hmm. so because because you, because you communicate yes. yeah yeah and um so atmosphere and uh probably um, honesty and transparency among us mm-hmm. like uh okay now we have this like bad vibe but uh we should discuss why it's so and we should uh, create some system not to repeat this um uh, 
mistake. Mm -hmm. For me, any mistake is only the point for to grow. And uh, they understand it as well. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but then uh, then you pick your associates uh, like easygoing or also emotional like you as yourself. Easygoing. Easygoing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just one in the team is enough. <laughs> one storm is enough. Yeah, yes. one storm is enough. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. In, in our team, Dennis is most mostly like easygoing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, it seems so on the outside, like, maybe. On, on, yeah, on the outside. <laughs> yeah. And actually, uh, um, I believe that I don't have these uh, soft skills. I mean, uh, somebody uh, born with this skills like nature. Communication. Uh, yes, uh, I believe that I don't. But uh, I have one good skill uh, about storms. Uh, that like um, I feel these storms inside of me and mixed emo mixed feelings, mixed emotions. But if this storm is outside. I'm the most focused and calm person mm -hmm. at that point. So uh, it helps me to uh, create uh, like system how we can solve it like a team to, uh, how to say, separate roles. Mm -hmm. Like you do this, I do this, we do this, and we have 10 minutes, <laughs> we should do it fast and, and that's all. Yeah. I think we're going to get back to to that like emotional part. Mm -hmm. uh, what or, I mean, maybe the next question is also connected to emotion, but I think we wanted to mention something about, like, the differentiators between, like, your practice and, like, the other practices in the market. Um, what I am, like, targeting at is specifically is, like, in Belgrade, but in Serbia also in general. So what do you think are your main, like, differentiators? Why would someone pick you over, you know, someone else for any project, like be, mm -hmm. being interior design or, or something else? Mm -hmm. mm. I, um, to be honest, I can't uh, highlight some particular features of our practice. Um, I've heard that, uh, like just people uh, told me that um, we often do something uh, with our hands. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can paint the wall if the builder doesn't know how to do it. We can uh, create uh, like some element or detail or uh, this curtain uh, together because we just can't find anybody who can do it according to our drawings. And um, this is like probably individual approach mm -hmm. to each project. Bauhaus style. Like. Bauhaus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, they, they made yes. like a lot of things also. So yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm connecting it to that. Yeah, um, and and, 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 and since, you, since you came from Russia mm -hmm. and the background is, is in a way a bad one, uh, a, a war, mm -hmm. uh, how do you perceive Serbian architecture and, and Belgrade as mm -hmm. a city in general? Mm -hmm. What do you like about Belgrade? Mm -hmm. yeah, let's say, uh, have you have you been to other cities? Yes, for sure. Yeah, well, have you been to Novi Sad? Yes, yes. So several times. Okay, so so those Serbian cities are there uh, similar to Russia, or okay, Moscow is huge, way way more bigger mm -hmm. than than Belgrade, but do they have connection? Do Serbian people and, and and actually architects have a similar uh, way of designing or way of thinking about architecture as Russian architects? Mm -hmm. uh, in general, uh, I noticed, and I mean, I believe that uh, we all <laughs> know this fact that uh, architecture is um, like uh, doesn't have borders. Uh, architects can understand each other uh, even without uh, common language. And it's like just just a fact. And uh, here in, in Serbia, uh, do you mean like uh, modern architects or? Um, you can, you can, yeah, you can focus on modern architecture, but um, later on I yeah, will okay. tell you something about the... the okay, okay. Uh, no, when I came here, um, uh, I learned several great studios, actually. 
And I think that uh, the level of their design, uh, it was about interior design, the level of their design is really good. Um, I I don't like to compare to compare with different countries because architecture and design is not only about uh, education or not only about your own vision. It's also about uh, economical situation, political situation, about selection of materials, about selection of furniture, about million billion stuff. Uh, that's why it's um, for me it's not like. Um, Hmm. how to say, clear or honest. It's ah, it's not fear to, to compare us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, despite of it, I can see great ideas here uh, in their practices. Yeah. That's why I, I don't have bad, bad words for <laughs> Serbian architects. Yeah. Uh, no, but... Uh... When you when you have studied architecture yeah. in Russia, uh, in Russia is like I don't know, Dennis. Uh, I think seven six years of bachelor studies. Bachelor it, 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 in it, Russia. It, yeah, is four it years. four years? Four years. Oh, bachelor oh, and two masters. It's like almost the same, but um, it's like it's, they start it's, before us. Yeah. They start before us, yeah, and, yeah. and and it's all, uh, it's four plus two. It's six years uh, at, at our country. It's five years. Yeah, three plus two. Yeah. Yeah. So, what do you do in the first year, for instance, for for the let's say for the uh, faculty people who are watching us, for the students, mm -hmm. uh, because you have one year more than us in the bachelor studies. What is like the the uh, what is the introduction to architecture in Russia? But uh, we started earlier. Yeah. We started uh, university at sixteen. At sixteen. Yes. So uh, you start also the... 16 the, or 17. And I also the high school is also earlier. Uh, or is we it... We just or is have like 11, 11 grades. Uh -huh, that, that's the elementary school for 11 grades. Uh, elementary and high school. High it's school, joined. Yes, it joined high school uh -huh. only two years, like uh, 10 and 11 and that grades. That was in, in former Yugoslavia, the, yes. same, the same system, yeah. That's why we start uh, studying earlier at like about 16 or 17. Uh, so at uh, 23, I uh, already work, worked. I had already my first job. Yeah. And when you worked in, in Russia, uh, you worked in, in the architectural uh, yes, firm? Yes. Strictly I, architectural. Yes, of course. I worked uh, as uh, an assistant of an architect mm -hmm. at first. And... Um, uh, then, like a junior architect, yeah, architect. It, it, it has the, the, those these levels. grades, yes. Uh, leading architect and senior architect. Like, and uh, I was a senior architect already at twenty-five. And and uh, as a senior architect, you have uh, you have a license. To, not in Russia. To, not in Russia. No. And uh, it's it's really pity because um, it influences. Uh, it influenced the quality of our practice, and uh, it would be better to have license, mm -hmm. I believe so. And because they don't have licenses, uh, they have a lot of, you know, these short-term courses, like schools about uh, interior design, mm -hmm. like one year or even six months school and you're great interior design. I don't believe in it. Mm -hmm. And um, it's really bad because uh, it uh, frustrates clients and frustrates our uh, sphere mm -hmm. and quality of work can go low. That That's like replicated in a lot of other um, practices, not just architecture. I mean, like design as well. Like, as well, yes. Yeah. UX design, for example. Yeah. Yep. It's like design being a designer in like two months or three months or something like that and then it's just like the market is filled with um designers that really don't understand the what are they not what are they doing exactly but the whole process the role mm -hmm. the role and and like the the commitment they just look at it as a, as a job i think there's i mean as a job in terms of like something that I, that I can learn in three months and then I can have a job and that's the only goal. And that's kind of, 
Um, I guess it's becoming a problem maybe or it's just a challenge. But uh, coming back to, to what we were talking about, you know, architecture uh, and practice in general, architectural practice, I think it's a good segue to show the surprise or the... Yeah, the... The, the board. <laughs> the board, yeah. yeah. Intrigue. Yeah. yeah, I will I will just... Oh, wow. Should I help you? Yeah, yeah. you can help me. Oh, wow. Or or we can oh. switch. Or we can switch. <laughs> yeah. We can switch. Take this one and I will take yeah. that okay. one. Let's yeah. do that. To be, to be in the middle. Yeah. Okay. Ah. Great. Yeah, so I think I this is a good it. segue. So much. Yeah, to comment uh about we can we can talk about these projects that we yes. that we are showing here but also um to take like a high level approach about these projects um i i see i i noticed like a lot of like some interesting details mm -hmm. like some like kind of for example in the coffee shop this wall that's kind of like yeah. deteriorating and it's always something like special yep. that is happening in the space um does this happen like spontaneously uh in the, you know when you're in the space and then you say okay we can just like tear down this wall or whatever um or you really plan in like super detailed way and it, was this like does this evolved in the sense of okay we started like with super detailed drawings and then later we noticed okay we can just scrap this or mm -hmm. like do something completely different or, or you find something interesting in that in that room that it's interesting to be uh, conservated mm -hmm. in a way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, a lot of details here. Yes. <laughs> interesting. Uh, in general, no, it's um, all these details are not uh, spontaneous because um, we have our some kind of approach how to start the project, how to understand what we should do here. And uh, in case of uh, restaurants or cafes or bars, I mean, in case of offices uh, or another typology, it's different. But here um, we have to ask our client uh, about, as usual, like target audience, na -na -na, uh, what concept of this uh, place will be and that's all. But uh, also I ask them, like, what is your financial um, plan and uh, after that we can understand how many uh, hours and money uh, users should spend here mm -hmm. and after that we have these numbers we have some references by clients and um, I mean conceptual references uh, not picture but like sense of this uh, project and then we collect all these uh, aspects and understand what is important here and what is like flexible and um, what we should do here to make a person spend here like three hours, for example, and buy three bottles of wine, for example, what I should do here. And uh, for um, this is like uh, the last one, uh, mm -hmm. the process bar name process mm -hmm. um, wine bar with a great uh, selection of Serbian wines and um, we after these discussions and actually that are our clients <laughs> after discussions with them we understood that um, we have to create here some kind of democracy uh, atmosphere democratic atmosphere uh, why? Because if we uh, if we want people to stay here for four hours, for example, uh, so these people have to make new friends here. How we can do it? I mean, architecturally, how we can um, make people to introduce themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, and we decided that um, it should be like one united bench. Because when uh, when you do separated tables with the uh, chairs, okay, you have separated companies, separated people. But if you your goal is to unite people, you have to unite it on one bench, for example, uh, in this case. And um, then we thought, okay, it would be one bench. Uh, what's the 
uh, height of this bench. Uh, according to uh, this position, you see that uh, the floor of this bar uh, is a bit uh, under, is a bit down of street level, so you have to uh, step down like three steps. And um, when you uh, moderate, simulate this, like, okay, I enter this space and somebody uh, is sitting. Uh, if we're speaking about democracy, the eye level of these people should be approximately on the same level. Mm -hmm. That's why uh, we made this bench like higher than ordinary one. And um, <clears throat> also with tables. Here we can see like uh, bar tables, bar tables. Tables are also about, uh, sorry, <laughs> are also about uh, new, uh, to make new friends. Because when you uh, meet somebody new, it's not very comfortable to sit with them immediately. But it's mm -hmm. okay to stay at this high table. And you have this opportunity to, to, to go away anytime. But most likely you will stay there like for two hours mm -hmm. <laughs> at least. And next time you will come to this bar with these guys and uh, it's like already friendship. Mm -hmm. So, um, so the first impression is really important. The, f the, the first impression of the, of, the, of the space you're entering. Yes. And, 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 and the design, uh, design reflects on whether you will come back into that place with those also. people who who are you meeting with also of but course that's like a i wouldn't say a strange uh concept in 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 belgrade at least but it's kind of like unusual unconventional because i believe that most clients will like scrap that idea uh because uh i believe we kind of like prefer those like separated kind of places mm -hmm. where you can just sit with your friends so that uh, nobody's like too close to you. But on the other hand, we're also like, um, as a people, like warm so that we can like connect. So it's kind of like bridging that gap between between the two with design. So it's like, okay, I'll, we'll make this unified bench so that everyone is close and feel like more intimate atmosphere, yeah. like between, especially when you have a couple of wines or something, mm -hmm. then it's like, the magic happens. And after the so. third bottle. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. But then the architecture is like a scene, like a background for everything. Yes. For that. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And um, architecture and uh, especially interior design for me, uh, for me is like a great background for people's lives. And I believe that um, design and architecture can influence uh, people's mood, people's emotions. Mm -hmm. And uh, my goal is to create some like safety and pleasant space for them, just to give this time for them to uh, to support them. I, I don't know to support their ideas probably. For example, this uh, curtain from um, orange fence, uh, safety fence on construction site. Uh, we made it out of this uh, material. And it's quite unusual. And uh, I, be I believe, probably I, I'm just a dreamer, but I believe that when like people uh, see it, they understand maybe unconsciously that um, everything is possible and then they, that they can um, do what they want I mm -hmm. mean, in their lives. Yeah. It's not about design, but it's about their lives. Yeah, that's an interesting concept. I mean, subconsciously, it's connected to to that. And the name of the bar is process. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like, also, it has some more layers, uh, semantically. Yes, it. yes, it was it was uh, an important point also, because uh, according to this name, we decided that uh, we will show the process um, uh, with the construction materials. So this uh, bar table, is made uh, out of construction blocks, mm -hmm. this bench also, this curtain, um, this lightning. It's like just uh, poly polycarbonate or... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
Yeah, so um, it's not about design for design or uh, just to just to make it be- beautiful, I don't know, or just to make it comfortable. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, it's more about... Um, storytelling. Storytelling as yeah. well, yeah. yes. Uh, I can see this this really in, in this picture and, and listening to you. Um, there's, a, there's a question that we should ask... Um, um, I think you will agree. Uh, clients are really important uh, in this sort of designing. Mm-hmm. They need to understand uh, the, the, the level of complexity of, uh, of, of, of an architect vision, let's say like that. Mm-hmm. So if, if clients and architect are in the same level, then these types of interior and architectural designs can make it happen in, the, in, the, in this space. <clears throat> So if they do not understand, that's a tricky that's a tricky way of uh, mm-hmm. of doing things. So uh, uh, how is your how is your um, how do you educate yeah. how do you educate uh, clients and what is your relation and uh, opinion about that mm. with with clients? Yeah, I understand. Um, at first, you should, uh, based on my experience, you should involve. Uh, the clients from the very first step, from the very first point. You should uh, explain uh, like, okay, we have this space. This space has benefits and uh, like bad points and uh, we have to collect it. Um, And then I don't know how, uh, but when people it's like about a team when people are involved in your process when you're uh, when you show all your concerns ideas um, to them um, they feel like they are a part of this process I suppose that it's important for for them to feel this uh, involvement and uh, because of it, Uh, We don't have, no, Uh, sometimes we have these questions, but mostly we don't have these frustrating questions, like why it's so. Mm -hmm. Because at the very first point, we decided that we have this common strategy, like our strategy, and this strategy has these rules. Mm -hmm. According to these rules, we create design of course, and, yeah. and and then then you spend a uh, much more time in concept in concept uh, area of the project. Much more time than <laughs> than than the, than actually developing it. I don't know. Uh, no, we don't. Unfortunately, depends also depends, like on the, yes. on the project. Yes. But also, we were talking about emotion a lot, and you mentioned one interesting thing when we were talking before is that. Um, might be controversial on on some level, yeah. but like emotion, uh, emotional like spaces, places that are designed with uh, emotion in mind that connects people. And you, we were talking also about democracy, how that creates business value. So how do you use that as a negotiating tool with clients to explain? Mm-hmm. Okay, if people like you mentioned one example, like people feel comfortable they will pay more because yep. they feel feel great, right? And they met new friends and so on. So it's quite a powerful uh, feeling. But how do you then uh, translate that into some kind of business values, some kind of uh, like numbers, like stats that client maybe like are more acquainted to, right? Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, actually how it actually produces like business value mm-hmm. in that sense. How do you explain that mm-hmm. more before you actually, because uh, it's easy now when we talk about this already made yep. uh, place, you know, right? It's a place now um, that, yeah, like people are, are spending like uh, more there than maybe in some other place. But it's easy to talk when it's already there. Mm-hmm. But how do you talk about it when it's like on the paper or mm-hmm. not even in the paper, but on the paper, but like in your mind? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, I can um, share with you one example, uh, which is 
uh, in the process now. It's uh, a fitness, like sport club, mm -hmm. fitness club. And uh, we had all these discussions with our clients. And uh, um, according to their discussions, it was obviously that it should be very modern space, that this space should impress person uh, uh, to buy this, um, how to say, not, not a ticket, but uh, to buy a month. Membership. Membership, yeah. yes. Uh, to buy it and to call the friends, uh, I don't know, to uh, to make community around this sport. Because um, we understood that sport club is not about just function, it's also about a lifestyle. Now we have uh, fashion, sport fashion, high level, uh, different trends, I mean, healthy food, smoothies, I don't know, everything. And actually, uh, they will uh, provide all this stuff also. So we understood that it's not about sport space. It's about lifestyle, according to this idea. And they agreed with this. Mm -hmm. I mean, totally. According to this idea, we should um, create, again, some atmosphere uh, that a person who come there understands that, like... They um, they create they created something interesting for me, and probably I can't find it anywhere else. So of course maybe it's a bit like more expensive than I expected, but it's about my lifestyle. I'm in trend. This is like trendy space. Um, what does like modern uh, means like modern attractive place? What does it mean for you when someone says that? Mm -hmm. How do you perceive that? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you can use maybe another example, like if you from if you this think board. About it. Yeah, from this board, I would say that we don't have any modern <laughs> <laughs> things here because it's about restaurant. Mm -hmm. Because uh, when uh, we speak about uh, sport space, it also have to be very clean or uh, this um, feeling that it's totally clean here, mm -hmm. pure cleanness. Uh, that's why we can speak about metal surfaces, tiles, colors, not like bright colors, but different colors. Uh, here, um, I don't know, I, I can, for example, explain you some things about that uh, blue and uh, yellow one. That's the TT one. Yes, the TT, which uh, actually was published on Arc Daily mm -hmm. last year, probably. And uh, this space, um, the target audience of this space were uh, like students uh, around uh, around this space, around this location. And uh, the main food is like uh, junk food. So we understood that for students and for junk food, we should create some place where it would be okay for you to be dirty. Mm -hmm. I mean, to be dirty but because of this burger, because of this juicy meat, I don't know. And uh, for this point, we can't create like clean white space because mm -hmm. in white space, even here, it would be a bit embarrassing to be uh -huh. dirty. Mm -hmm. But here, no, of course no. It's like walls uh, walls tell you, eat, please, eat, please, <laughs> eat. Be dirty. Don't hesitate. Mm -hmm. And Like, for example. Yeah, you mentioned the, the, the gym example. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting for me, it's kind of like, when you mention like it should be clean, it already... Uh, helps you in deciding what's gonna yes. the material is gonna be. Right? Yes, and this is the process. Yeah. Yes. And it's like putting a, like a, a list of things, and then okay, like I'll put all of these requirements, and then I'll think about each of those, and then okay, for this uh, requirement, like should be clean, I'll select these types of materials. For something else, I should select this, and so on. And that's kind of like taking something very abstract and. Mm -hmm providing like very a concrete thing that you need to do for that. Yes. Right? In brainstorm, uh, there is that um, like approach, like de uh, deconstruct deconstructive, decon deconstructive, 
approach yeah. when you yeah mm -hmm. when you take uh some word for example or idea and separate it on million billion uh, mm -hmm. as associations and uh different words for example i think it's a, it's a deductive met method deductive the the, the deductive, deductive and deductive, yeah. deductive. Me method methodology methodology yeah. yes yeah but that, that's the same yeah you 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 separate it to the i don't core. know yeah. to the to the uh, common denominator yeah, yeah, yeah the core mm -hmm. Yes, and I would say that some kind of this uh, approach we use uh, when we start the project to understand why this place should be here. Mm -hmm. Probably I understand that uh, it's uh, it's nothing and it's like it doesn't be here in Belgrade. And then you, and then you come to to the word to the syntagma. Let's say yes. two words. Yeah. Um, top. Yes. Yeah, that are key. To yes, that and you put it. Um, on the top of your oh, concept and approach mm -hmm. yeah. and everything uh, what you will uh, create further should be according to this yeah and it's core. easy and it's easy to to defend the project then in in every way yep uh, in front of clients yes yeah, that's it's, it's, right it's really easy and yes. appealing to them and then they realize uh, they are into that project and also if they are um, if they are um, Pre present from the from the day one, yeah. mm -hmm. they feel like it's it's their design. Also, yeah. that it's and their the, idea. That, yeah, well. that they are there, and that's the f psychological uh, twist. Yep. Uh, and they are feeling really great. Yeah, um, amazing. Yeah, but the, we can see also that you design also you and your team. Mm -hmm. uh, you're designing also furniture. In, yes, in, of course. In every space, yeah. So those chairs are really. <laughs> But you, you have a guy, if I remember from last time we met, that uh, collects vintage furniture, mm -hmm. yeah. that you work with him a lot. And then he found like a very rich heritage uh, mm -hmm. here in, in, in Belgrade specifically, but in other places as mm -hmm. well. And then he can find it like for... Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to like uh, publicly maybe <laughs> say that they're like too cheap mm -hmm. or something. But uh, in some places they can find like really mm -hmm. affordable like uh, pieces of furniture that are vintage and very. Uh, I saw like one uh, one small mm -hmm. digression. Like I saw um, Instagram post of my friend that said, uh, "Oh, I had this vintage lamp." that my grandma like and I like uh, put mm -hmm. it in the trash bin and now it's like 800 euros or something like that mm -hmm. it's yeah it's insane but um given uh, to go back to the furniture and the other yep. details that you do in the, in the space um how important is like the sketching part of the process for mm -hmm. you in terms of like you mentioned also that you do a lot of things with hands like um, our, our artisanal part of the process is very important. So how how does sketching like fit into uh, that process? And I saw already that you do like uh, a lot of sketches, even when you present the project, like on Art Daily or, or some other example, there were like mm -hmm. a lot of sketches like this should be should go here and so on. Um, but um, yeah, how how is that important? To you and, and your team, yeah. Do you force it or, or and, it's just and, like natural? Yeah, and is, is it a uh, is it the fastest way to emphasize the idea? Okay, yeah. For me, uh, sketching is very important because um, I can feel it now with my hand differently. Uh, but um, I don't force my team to do it. I mean, somebody use this skill. Somebody doesn't have this skill. It's like, okay, for me, uh, but um, I know that clients also like sketches mm, because it shows, yeah, because it shows that you're not uh, an IT guy, you're not a programmer, you're an artist as well. And um, for me, it's important. I don't, uh, um, how to say, uh, I can't uh, draw pictures. I mean, uh, I can't paint it. I'm very bad, like an artist. Mm -hmm. But uh, if we speak about architectural schemes or furniture or like some structures, of course, only with hand. Yeah, well, that's the best way. But then 
in the later phases you move to programs, to softwares? Yeah, of course. No, we start um, with every project. The first step is uh, measurements. Okay. After that, my team uh, create like drawings in some software with these measurements. Then they uh, then they build like three D model just of walls, and then I take these uh, pictures, I print it, I take it, and start drawing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, on that on that on that picture. On that uh, yeah, like yes. a collage. Yes, on that yeah, on yeah, that yeah, picture. Yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, but uh, do you do you use in interior design? Do you use maybe um, BIM programs, for instance, uh, like uh, like Revit, like 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 Revit, like yes. CAD? Yes, Archicad no, but uh, yes, some somebody from my team uh, work in works in Revit, and uh, like it's okay for us. Um, if we speak about big projects, I mean, several floors of some office spaces, for example, of course, it's better to use BIM uh, programs uh, uh, to integrate engineering uh, parts as well into your uh, project, because usually engineers uh, work in BIM, uh, BIM uh, software. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but if we speak about small bar where uh, I can do this engineer system without engineers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. We can do it like uh, in AutoCAD. Yeah, yeah. When did you start? Um, did you always knew you go you're going to be an architect? Mm -hmm. Actually, um, yeah, I started uh, drawing when I was two years old, mm -hmm. about. Um, and uh, when I was seven, I uh, came up with this idea to be an architect to my mother. And she was like, okay, no problem, as you want. <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, I would say that um, I did a lot of things, uh, not only drawing um, and designing something, but only this thing was not boring for me. I mean, I could spend hours sitting and drawing. Mm -hmm. Then that's really important. It, yes, and that was only one activity when my parents could, um, for, how to forget about me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But actually, the, the, the most cherishable thing is when you find a job that isn't your job. Mm -hmm. That you feel like you're doing it, you love to do it, and then you... Um, lost in time while while you are doing it mm -hmm. yeah architecture can give you that if you like if, if you if you dive in into that um, into that direction actually i don't know i don't know if if economy can give you that in in, in the sense of way you know i don't know that 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 that, that creativity is really in those uh, like painting uh, music architecture in those professions yeah, it's hard to com compare <laughs> those two. Mm -hmm. do, do you remember, I know it's it's kind of a different uh, question, but connected to when you first started drawing, like what was your first, what did you draw the f for the first time? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember. No, of course I don't remember. But, um, but I remember one uh, a bit later drawing, um, my drawing also uh, always was were very detailed. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like to draw people in some um, scene, in some like uh, activity uh, thing, and I always uh, imagined um, the spot, what they are doing, and why. <laughs> and that drawing uh, was um, like from the bird view, uh, the building of a hotel, the beach see and uh, different groups of people doing different stuff uh, very small people mm -hmm. so all my drawings were like about highly detailed not about 
well drawn uh, mm -hmm. picture, but about detailed picture. Like axonometers. Yes, ex exactly. So yeah, you actually exactly. did, did the, the architectural drawings like like a yes. child. <laughs> I, I, can, I can show you. It's 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 really about axonometry and actually uh, you 3D. can send us that. <laughs> yes, I will. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, amazingly, uh, we also really do do our work uh, through axonometry. Mm -hmm. Axonometry is a really architectural way of looking at things. Yep. Uh, from that perspective, is is it's good to uh, to, to see the whole uh, space uh, connected to each other, even though uh, you wouldn't see like like a bird in mm -hmm. a, in real in real uh, in real uh, time. You yeah. know, when you are walking, you see as a, as a from as the a person. as a yes. person from human perspective, or is it is it uh, a frog perspective mm -hmm. when you're from downside that, mm -hmm. that perspective mm -hmm. that shrinks yeah uh, how um i was wondering like for example in my uh, example i when i was in kindergarten i drew like something from a book mm -hmm. and then my kindergarten teacher was like you know she commented like very positively about that so that was a driving force later for me to continue in the creative path mm -hmm. if she said probably oh this is shit or whatever i would probably like i don't know hate it and i wouldn't go that mm -hmm. path do you have something like that like a similar experience like that someone like pushed you or, or you always knew that uh, okay this is what i want to do no matter what mm -hmm. uh, who says that, mm -hmm. like anything about that um actually i must say uh thanks a big thanks to my parents because they really supported me and uh, any activity, I mean, music, uh, music drawings, <laughs> um, anything. Um, uh, that's why. Um, but actually, uh, when I uh, used to dance like a child, and uh, I went to this uh, organization, how to say, to the school dance school, mm -hmm. uh, my parents told me like. Okay, probably it's better for you to draw. <laughs> From that time, uh, I, I I don't dance uh, <clears throat> totally, but with drawing, no, they were always supportive. And um, um, when I decide, when I was about entering the university, my father's my father uh, he didn't uh, believe that I can enter without, uh, like money or connections or mm -hmm. people because I'm originally from a small village. Um, and, um, uh, we have this, uh, question with, with him. And he, he told me if you, uh, if you do it, I will buy, I don't know what it was. I, I'll buy uh, like a camera, camera because, uh, photography is also my, your passion. Yes. And uh, I was okay. I knew that I can solve it. So I entered it without any problems. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, it was even pre... Um, um, not that uh, part, uh, not examination, but pre-examination mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for like uh, good students. I don't know how to say. Mm -hmm. So I entered it before uh, the main wave of students entered it. And uh, um, and that's all. Uh, I was with camera with architectural faculty. <laughs> with yeah, that, I think that some schools have uh, like mostly like art schools have that like pre pre examination. Mm -hmm. kind yes, of. yes. Yeah. I so. didn't. Maybe some other like schools have that as well. That are not art schools, but I I, I saw that a couple mm -hmm. of times. Yeah, mm -hmm. interesting. And and on that uh, examination, uh, when you enter faculty in Russia. Mm -hmm. Uh, did you draw uh, yes. as, as one of the tasks? Yes, of course. To, yeah. Three years of uh, painting, uh, of uh, drawing, like gra graphic. Yeah. Of course. It was a huge part of our education. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine they left out here in Belgrade, they left out, actually in Serbia, they left out the, the whole, whole yes. process of drawing. When you enter the faculty, the exam, you just need yeah. to... Yeah, in the exam. You just need to to fill in the um, cultural uh, sphere, uh, knowing the, the general knowledge, general knowledge of, let's say, historic elements in architecture, culture, art. 
Yes, unfortunately, I know it uh, because one of uh, uh, a girl from my team, she's Serbian and uh, she is from Bel uh, Belgrade University Architecture Faculty. <clears throat> and uh, we discussed it. She told me that they already don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. Fortunately, we had professors that were like uh, focused on that. Like mm -hmm. they pushed us into like just drawing all mm -hmm. the time. And um, I don't know about you, Igor, but like in my uh, diploma project, I had like, that was my like decision, by the way, because of the previous like, um, like motivations for that. I had just, I bought like one book and it was like filled with sketches for that, just for that project. Mm -hmm. So it was like, and I put it like on the on the end uh, presentation. Wow, smart! I put it like on the jury, and they were like asking some questions about that. And um, I mean, I drew a at in uh, at in square, like the the main square, like and, agora. Yeah, the agora, like the main the, the the old one, the first one. And then the professor in the jury, the professor asked about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was just like a random drawing, and then I just randomly answered like as well for that. So you got the best mark. I, I I think so. Yeah, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly. Yeah, but you you brought that uh, you brought that uh, methodology from the other studio. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. From yeah, the yeah. other studio. Yeah, that 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 was the studio from our professor Igor Aikovic. Uh -huh. We all went to the, to his studio, and he he had that um, uh, workshop to studio, mm -hmm. which was sketching, mm -hmm. and then you sketch everything, and then you bring that book. As a sketchbook yeah. to your uh, defense uh, of mm -hmm. that project at the end of the semester, and then after that we just switched. Everybody of us just switched that every project we are doing, we are doing from sketch one to sketch final, mm -hmm. and then you can you can explain the whole project in, in, yeah. in, in yeah. that book. It's a. Uh, and this is like it's similar with this uh, with my approach with the clients. It's similar. Mm -hmm. Actually, the you, process. Yeah, yeah. The, show the process. Show every every each like step of it. But do you give them to sketch something? Yeah, <laughs> uh, I don't do as a it. participatory design. No, I don't. Do, I don't do it like that. It's a rule that you should do it. Yeah. But I we have, should have boundaries. Yes, <laughs> yes, we should have it here. But um, I have some uh, story. Actually, funny story. Um, I used um, I um, created uh, like uh, how to say public space in uh, the airport in Moscow, and uh, my clients were two like you know gangsters from nineties and. Um, Which one, Sharametyeva? Uh, Vnukova, uh -huh. yes, Vnukova. But Sharametyeva, it was uh, like my other project. I was like a senior architect of Terminal C. Uh, of interior design. This is the, the reconstructed one. Reconstructed now, like one. Five, five, six yes, years ago. Yes, yes, reconstructed one. It was uh, the concept by some jo German studio, and our uh, office, not Freya, but uh, the, the uh, local the pr firm. previous previous one. Yes, um, had to integrate that German concept according to Russian Russian rules. Uh, and I was uh, like a senior architect of this like five or six thousand square meters. <laughs> I was only twenty six, seven, mm -hmm. six. Yes, so it was it was incredible. And about uh, that story with the gangsters, it was another uh, airport. And um, after three hours of negotiations of uh, about the concept. Um, I found them drawing, like two adult men, very, you know, how to say, I was a bit afraid. <laughs> and they started to draw, to imagine, to create something. Christina, look, probably it should be like this. And I was just, it was just magic for me. When these very serious and rich people start draw drawing like kids it was the moment for me yeah 
actually architect can be uh, more powerful than gangsters in that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, nobody would expect that, right? Yes. But then if you insist on it, yeah, that's if you believe in that approach, it's always possible. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, yeah, and you you said in your team there are there are Russian people and Serbian people. Yep. Also. How do they hang hang along? I would say perfect. 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 Yes. Yeah, and and you uh, do you speak English? In, in uh, mostly we speak in Russian because our uh, Serbian architect used to live in Russia oh, in her nice. childhood. Yes. Uh, So, but um, we, uh, in this process of learning Serbian, everybody from us, from our team, and uh, we speak English with suppliers. Mm -hmm. But in office, of course, like Russian, but um, now we're hiring also, and uh, I do some interviews with uh, English speakers. And I think that it would be just great for us to uh, to develop our language inside of the office. That was actually my next question. Like, are you hiring? And like, what are the future plans? Or uh, I think also our like uh, audience, or a lot of them are students, so they might be interested maybe in some like uh, internships. Do you like offer that? And what are like some future plans for? for mm-hmm. Korea? Um, plans. Uh, I don't know. It's difficult <laughs> about <laughs> plans, um, but in general, of course, we have our plans like uh, like an office. Uh, we have several projects that we should complete. We have several projects that we should uh, create now, and uh, we will complete it like about I don't know in the middle of spring. Um, We also we also are trying to find not only inter- interior uh, projects, for example, that uh, Karma Koma mm-hmm. uh, oh, club. It opened yesterday, right? Yesterday, yeah. yes. Um, it's like not about only interior design, but also about renovation, about new structure <clears throat> in the yard, and um, we're trying to find uh, this like bigger project than we have now uh probably in different countries why not mm-hmm. um i think that yeah. that like yes cool uh, do, do do you think do you think uh, um that architecture is a okay it is but that we can take Uh, uh the the benefits of it that architecture is a global thing we can work from any place to any market um uh, trick is a smart and interesting question i don't believe that we can uh work as an architect without understanding the con con context context con- context context yeah. yes yeah. Because for me, it was very important uh, when I came here to understand what's going on here with uh, Serbian architecture, like uh, historical or modern, with uh, Serbian places, cafes, how people got used to behavior in, inside of these projects. And, um, and I don't believe that we can create something great. Of course, we can create something, but... Will it uh, fine? Will it smart? I don't know. Will it work? I don't know. Mm. In general, if you're, for example, uh, a 3D visualizer, mm-hmm. you can work from... Wherever, yeah. Uh, yeah. But if you are an artist and if you have to create a concept, uh, I believe that you should understand the country, people mm-hmm. living here. Of course, yeah. Yes. Yeah. For instance, our... Our friend from the team million, he's working like for Argentina, right? Now. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but uh, but just in a way as a 3D uh, visualizer. Yes. Okay. Yeah, if you want to be an architect, an architect in that context, you need to understand the context. I'm totally, I'm yes. totally on, um, with you on that page. Um, actually, when 
one hundred years ago, when when uh, when the Romanov family uh, was there from the from the throne, mm-hmm. uh, their architect, their, their royal architect, came to Serbia yeah, to no. Yugoslavia, and uh, our government house or our um, uh, national assembly house, he designed all those mm-hmm. houses as a that's a uh, we say academism. That's the way. Of, that's mm-hmm. that's one of the latest styles. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's say yes. if you explain that that after modernism there's just postmodernism mm-hmm. and then variations of mm-hmm. modernism in yeah. all the styles. So um, we hope that now you can be one of the. <laughs> oh no! Please, <laughs> you can be one of the of the Russian uh, Finnish Russian because you have Finnish blood. That's the and that's, the Armenian one. Uh, Armenian also. <laughs> <laughs> Armenian also. Armenia is as uh, like it's similar to Serbian, yeah. but Finnish it's interesting. Yeah, okay. Because uh, Finns are really uh, they're known about the Scandinavian minimalism design mm-hmm. that I think we lack. We lack that design mm-hmm. in, in all your project. It's a it's a core. It's a it's a process. It's a something that is uh, totally. Uh, left out of something which is not uh necessary here. necessary yes. yeah just the importance is there yes uh, and the idea and the idea is the most difficult thing to find so uh i hope uh most of people will 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 influence will be influenced by this episode and and continue in that way yeah maybe especially young yeah but actually, can I stop here for a second? I just, I just, uh, I'd like to say that uh, minimalism itself, it's like okay. But uh, when I came here in Serbia, I understood that uh, I can't, I can't do it. I can't do clear, uh, totally clear space here, because people probably are not ready for this. Probably got used to uh, another decoration, in other spaces. And my goal is to create comfortable spaces for them, not only like uh, organically, but also psychologically. Mm -hmm. And if uh, I notice that uh, in local restaurants, we have a lot of pictures, frames, I don't know, lamps. Okay, I'll... uh, I don't uh, I don't want to repeat it but I have to um, to take it like a filter to understand that we can't do minimalism here mm-hmm. not yet I, I, I think so or at least in that it's about the context sense. yes yeah yeah and um, maybe we can like finish with um, with a question of like advice uh, mm-hmm. this is kind of an advice also maybe like not to be like too extreme, like not to be too much uh, into like what um, maybe we are too biased sometimes into designing a space on taking that one direction, but maybe we should like listen more to to the actual like needs of the people, like mm-hmm. that, that what they really need and not what we think that they need. And uh, the clients have a feeling of what, what that is. But what is some other like advice that you may give like to to architects and young professionals um, how they should design a space or how they should approach you know the process and and, and the work? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, a process. I would say that uh, you sh- uh, we should um, we should imagine every time uh, how we use this space. If we are not an architect, an architect. Mm-hmm. I mean, because for architects, it's like okay, it's okay, it's nice, it's clear. But for other people uh, who probably don't understand, they just can feel it, and uh, you should put yourself into this role. If you don't have architectural education, if you don't have architectural vision, or I don't know creativity mm. and in general I would say that uh, the main part is to find uh, to find uh, your own system how to get uh, to set goals and to find this system 
how to get to this path. Mm -hmm. To find it not based on previous experience or not based on some references, because if we uh, if we repeat somebody's path or even ours, but previous path, uh, probably we will not come to some new point of our development. Mm -hmm. But if we want to enhance well, yeah. ourselves, our practice, we should think that this process, this path is also important. And every time I think that we should uh, choose new uh, and original, original way to to mm -hmm. get to get it. To always have a, like a you're always starting from scratch almost. Like yeah. With every new new project, mm -hmm. and you're not like repeating uh, like the same thing over and over yes. again with maybe some variations. Yes. And we can see that from just from these examples, we can really feel that. Mm -hmm. That is like always different. And uh, very usual, of course, but I must say that uh, don't be afraid to, 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 do, to make mistake. It's mm -hmm. like usual, we all know this, but we still uh, are afraid to make mistakes. But mm -hmm. mistakes is uh, only a point for your development. And that's all because, because without mistakes, uh, you can see where you have put your energy to to grow. So mistakes, I, I like mistakes. I think that mistakes are... From like, mistakes, we can learn the most. Yes, yes, yeah. all, all humanity. <laughs> yeah. The last thing, question that I would ask is, um, do you want to like promote something or mention like someone or whatever for, for, for the end of the... Uh, episode oh wow <laughs> i don't know only probably my team uh, by the way the, that's the picture like of your current team but one person is missing right no it's it's not a picture of current team to be honest but now from this yes from this picture one person uh, is missing it's uh this picture was taken maybe three uh three years ago mm -hmm. yes quite old cool yeah, we can end, uh, end up here. Okay. And, uh, um, yeah, we'll also say hi to the to the team. To the team, yeah. We, uh, I don't know if, if we met somebody at the, at the party. Maybe yeah. you when you stayed. Before, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> after. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you met. Yeah, but, yeah, the party was great. Thank you. And actually, all this party we made with with my team. Yeah, yeah they yeah. were involved in it. I mean. Uh, we were building this, uh, how to say, tables and things for snack bar. Another girl uh, was managing all production stories with all uh, suppliers. So it was just perfect. Amazing. Yes. And the, and the, and the location of your office is really a, um, amazing. Mm -hmm. Amazing. All, your office is uh, on the amazing place. In, in yes. And again, I invite in you Dutch. to invite you to do something in our office as well. Thanks. To collaborate somehow. We, we will collaborate. Yeah. Somehow. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. I'll be happy. Great. Thanks. Thanks for you know taking the time to talk about your projects and you know the the process and mm -hmm. everything. And yeah, thanks for everyone listening. Yeah. The, this was the this was the. Uh, the first episode uh, we have in English in the studio. Uh, in the studio, uh -huh. wow! Yeah, and uh, and uh, the architect who came from Serbia 100 years ago is Nikolai Krasnov. Yes, so, yes, yes. Uh, it's really honor to have you here 100 years later. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. And uh, this was the episode, guys, uh, with Christina from Frey Architects. Uh, uh, I hope it was interesting. Um, uh, special thanks to our sponsors, uh, companies Groe, Graphisoft, and Alumil. And we have also another uh, surprise. But yeah, we have a surprise for Christina, yeah, from, from our sponsors. One more? Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. These, these are the... Oh, yeah. We like this. Everything is Thank here. Thank you. Okay, I'll see it later. Okay. In those yeah. bags, grocery bags, you have two grocery Ooh. bags. We can uh, mention briefly what is in, oh, in each. So this from yeah, our main I can sponsors. Show it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's in it's inside. Okay. You have you have yeah. some um 
you have some thank you guys yeah magazines magazines yeah uh, notebooks uh, notebooks and everything yeah, yeah. and uh, we can say also also uh, thank you to the patrons if you would like to uh, hear more about um, uh, what we what we would uh, what we had discussed uh, prior to this episode you can click and join to our patreon channel and uh, and see what we have uh, put there and then it's um, that's it i think yep yeah well, thanks cool. to see you guys thanks, thanks see you. bye thanks. bye Thank you.